Jyotin Dash was a luminous star in the galaxy of death-defying freedom fighters that shone on India's firmament in the early years of the 20th century. They prided in shedding blood their own, as it was the only way they thought they could help emancipate India from the shackles of a foreign power far mightier than the unarmed Indians. The then head of the Central Intelligence, Government of India, reported that every violent action against the government was not anarchical. It should be deemed as only revolutionary, with public appreciation as its aim was to replace the government with a national one. Such so called anarchist Jyotindranath Dash was born in Calcutta on 27th October 1904. Bonkim Bihari Dash and Srimati Shuhashini Devi were his parents. Originally, they hailed from North 24 Porgonas, Ichapur, but shifted to Calcutta in the 19th century. He passed his matriculation from the Mitra Institution Vavanipur branch in 1st Division 1921 under the Calcutta University. He lost his mother in 1913, so he was practically groomed by his father. 
My uncle, Jyotin Dash, was very determined in character. During his boyhood, he was very fond of sweets. During his several hunger strikes, he used to overcome this eating habit. Mahatma Gandhi captured the Congress in December 1920 at its Nagpur session with his program for non-violent non-cooperation. He promised the nation's freedom within a year's struggle, but he abruptly withdrew the movement soon after the violence Chorichura incident in UP. Jyotin was involved in the non-cooperation movement and was convicted for picketing of foreign clothes shops in Borobaja locality of Calcutta. He was released in shattered health from the Hooghly jail. The withdrawal of the movement disillusioned him, but it kept him engaged in the constructive program of the Congress. At the same time, it brought him in very close contact with the revolutionary leaders. Ultimately, he found inspiration from the late Shochindranath Shanyal the right-hand lieutenant of Rash Bihari Bosch of the Godur fame. I knew Jyotin by his party name, Robin. His first appearance was not at all convincing, as he was then in his very teens. And when I expressed my doubts to my husband about his capacity, he only said that time would prove if there was any metal in him. He also added that Robin so far had fully demonstrated his intrinsic value and opined that some day the world would discover his selfless mental strength. My husband belonged to the revolutionary organization of the northern India and was forced to abscond from UP to take shelter in South Calcutta. In 1922, Jyotin took admission in the South Suburban College, now renamed as Ashutosh College, in Interarts and passed his examination in the first division in 1924. During his studies, he engaged himself in bodybuilding exercise clubs through some of the revolutionary friends. He undertook military training through the university territorial forces. He also participated in Tarokeshwar Sottagraha movement started by Deshabandhu Chitranjan Dash against the heinous malpractices of the Mohant. He served to remove the distress caused to the people affected by the North Bengal flood under the supervision of Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bosch in 1923. And in 1924, they organized protection of the innocent people during the Holocaust of the Hindu-Muslim riot in the Korea area of South Calcutta. He took admission for his graduation course in Vidyashagar College of Calcutta in 1924. He also volunteered his selfless services to the South Calcutta Shevak Shamiti and Dokkhin Kolikata Torun Shamiti, which provided material services to the families of poor people. These bodies had a library, each of its own. Jyotin became a voracious reader of nationalist literature, which gave him an inner penetration to the freedom struggles all over the world. Notes from the confidential police file of the Kakori conspiracy case have caught a lot to say. Shochin was the father of the two seditious leaflets, the revolutionary and Deshbashir Pratinibedon, both of which were proscribed. The revolutionary was disseminated and broadcast in Bengal and UP as well as overseas at the same time. The Bengali leaflet was also distributed and broadcast in Bengal. Jyotin attended a secret meeting at Mirat in UP in September 1925. The meeting amongst others was also attended by Ram Prashad Bismil. Robin carried arms to Allahabad in the guise of a European for the Kakori Dekwaiti. While a student of the fourth year in the Vidyashagar College, 
Jyotin was arrested in connection with the Dokhineshwar bomb case and the Kakuri conspiracy case on 25th December 1925. As he could not be identified by any of the approvers or other independent witnesses, he was detained under the Bengal Criminal Ordinance. While in Midnapur jail, he had a sunstroke during the summer months. He was brought to the Alipur Central Jail in Calcutta for medical treatment. Soon after, he was transferred to Maiman Singh Jail, now in Bangladesh. The pinpricks and vagaries of the officials of the Maiman Singh Jail reached a climax when Jyotin and his jail associate, Sri Pannalal Mukherjee, could tolerate them no further. There was a row between them and the jail staff, headed by the superintendent, and in the melee, they were severely assaulted and were challenged in court for the riotous behavior and assault. This forced both Jyotin and Pannababu to resort a 21 day of hunger strike. Subsequently, they were transferred to Dhaka Central Jail in March 1928, and they were sent to the notorious Wali Jail, now in Pakistan. He was again shifted and interned in a far remote and underdeveloped village in Chittagong, Bangladesh, where language became a problem. He rented their paternal house and shifted to a mess. A new horizon opened for Jyotin as a dedicated and determined revolutionary. He engaged himself in organizing and training young men to a disciplined life of selfless devotees to Mother India. In no time, he found a large number of youths, students, and people from other walks of life to rally around him. His old comrades, whose unquestionable patriotism and party allegiance became so evident that all of them became a severe headache to the administration. The South Calcutta Torun Shamiti, the Kalighat Torun Shangho, the South Calcutta National School, the Dokkhin Kolikata Shevastrom of Orphanage, and such other public institutions kept him engaged. He became a teacher, a physical trainer, a librarian, a playmate to impressionable adolescents, a true friend to the helpless, and above all, he was the life and soul of the secret revolutionary organization. He was also equally mindful of his own studies and attended college regularly. He, along with other stalwarts of the revolutionary organization, participated in the organized rallies and demonstrations as Assistant Secretary of the South Calcutta District Congress Committee against the appointment and visit of the Simon Commission. On their release from detention, the Bengal revolutionaries sang their party differences and to prove their honesty, they formed a broad to equip the annual session of the Congress to be held in Calcutta in December that year under the presidency of Motilal Nehru with a volunteer force under strict military discipline. They chose Mr. Shubhash Chandra Bosch as GOC and reputed revolutionary leaders donned military officers' uniform. Jyotin was appointed as a major in the B Battalion of the Bengal Volunteers. And he also found another indomitable major, Shatta Gupta, by his side. Captain of Bengal Volunteers, Sri Vishwaji Dotto, and comrade of Shohi Jyotin Dash said, Memory is very painful. What is hunger strike? We know it very well. 63 days of hunger strike is humanly impossible. He is more than Dodhichi. At the instance of Bhagat Singh, Kamal Nath Tiwari, Sri Brijanath Vinod, both students of the Vidyashagar College, Calcutta, were introduced to Jyotin for training in bow manufacture. 
These two comrades were from Bihar and they shared a room on the top floor of the Arjay Samaj building. On the corner was a speech now Bihar देखिए वो है कि मेरा ख्याल मोमेंट की जो कड़ी है उसमें जतन दास बहुत मजबूत कड़ी थे क्योंकि जो भगत सिंह और उनके साथी सोच रहे थे नेफ्यू ऑफ शहीद भगत सिंह प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर जगमोहन सिंह सेड दैट जतिन दास वाज वेरी पॉपुलर इन पंजाब टू कांटेक्ट हिम आफ्टर द प्रोक्योरमेंट एंड इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ बोथ भगत सिंह एंड मार्टर भगवती चरण द ट्रेनिंग वाज कंप्लीट एंड द गन कॉटन which other chemicals was carried away by them. It was further settled that Jyotin would reach their secret hideout at Muchihata in Agra to do the rest of the training when he would get the signal from Bhagat Singh. And Jyotin kept his promise and in course of the training manufactured six bombs of less offensive nature. In January 1929, a secret beating of important ones including Shurjo Shen Jyotin Das, Pratul Vatacharjo, was held wherein it was resolved that on a prefixed date there should be a simultaneous rising of the force of the rebel group with arms to be procured and manufactured by the individual group leaders. Jyotin Das, I think, is one of the leaders of this program who sacrificed his life for the cause of peace, social justice, inequality, particularly political freedom of individuals. With the arrest of Shukdev and his two other colleagues, discovery of the secret bomb factories at Agra and Shaharanpur and the subsequent statements and confessions, the Punjab police unearthed a Punjab UP Bihar Maharashtra Bengal conspiracy. It led to the historic Lahore conspiracy case involving Bhagat Singh, Shukdev, B.K. Dotto, Rajguru, Vijay Sinha, Ajay Ghosh, Shiv Varma, Jayadev Kapoor, Jiten Shanyal, Shouren Pandey, Kamulna Tewari, Jyotindranath Dash, and some others as accused. ...to feed him. And it was on the 63rd day that he expired. In between, the government wanted uh, to just put him out of jail on some plea or the other, on bail or something, and see that he died outside. In the jail court at that time, there was no separate provision for the freedom fighters as jail inmates. Naturally, the freedom fighters were treated in the same category of murderers, decoits, and thieves. The prisoners were jailed under inhuman conditions with inhuman food and all sorts of dirty works. The freedom fighter prisoners were fed up and decided to protest against such inhuman activities of British government under the leadership of Bhagat Singh. The freedom fighters prisoners decided to go on with hunger strike. Due to his previous experience in the Maiman Singh jail, Jyotin protested against the hunger strike proposal. But when he found his co-prisoners were adamant, he agreed, subject to the condition that he, his first will be unto death till their demands were accepted. Bhagat Singh and other co-prisoners were duped by the jail authority and withdrew their hunger strike. But Jyotin went on. The jail authority tried to force free Jyotin. A rubber tube was inserted through Jyotin's nose to his stomach. But as Jyotin went on resisting, the rubber tube went into his lungs and milk got deposited, resulting to Jyotin's vomiting and bleeding through his nose. With high temperature, Jyotin was admitted in hospital, and his younger brother, Kiran, was allowed to stay with him for nursing. During Jyotin's stay in the hospital, all political leaders requested for accepting medicines, which was refused by Jyotin. The hospital authority refused to take further responsibility of Jyotin and he was brought back to the Brostal jail with his brother Kiron. 
সর্ব খর্ব তার দহে তব ক্রোধ দাহ হে ভৈরব শক্তি দাও ভক্ত পান চাহ সর্ব খর্ব তার দহে তব ক্রোধ দাহ হে ভৈরব শক্তি দাও ভক্ত পান চাহ সর্ব খর্ব তার দহে তব ক্রোধ দাহ দূর কর মহারুদ্র যাহা মুগ্ধ যাহা ক্ষুদ্র দূর কর মহারুদ্র যাহা মুগ্ধ যাহা ক্ষুদ্র মৃত্যু রে করিবে তুচ্ছ প্রাণের উৎসাহ হে ভৈরব শক্তি দাও ভক্ত পান চাহ সর্ব খর্ব তার দহে তব ক্রোধ দাহ অন কমিং ব্যাক আই ফাউন্ড ইন গ্যাসপিং ফর ব্রেড হিজ লাস্ট উইস ওয়াজ ফর মি টু সিং দি টু ন্যাশনাল সংস তবে একলা চল যদি তোর ডাক শুনে কেউ না তবে sacrificed his life at the altar of uh, freedom movement in India uh, as a result of his uh, hunger strike, as a result of his uh, uh, till death fast uh, in Lahore jail. He is uh, one of their most uh, glaring example of how a man can sacrifice his life for a great cause. Uh, motives, motivations and objectives of these revolutionaries we have to look back to the uh, freedom struggle of India, particularly that started since the beginning of this century. Uh, uh, now, the most important phenomenon of this uh, great struggle can be divided into three decades, because these three decades are very important. That is one beginning from 1901 to 10, the second one is 1920 to 1913 and the last phase that began from 1942. Gandhi came into the scene of Indian struggle uh, in the late half of the second decade of the 20th century and he realized that the freedom movement uh, through a revolutionary process as uh, was going on earlier was not the way with uh, the help of which you can touch the heart of the masses of India. Uh, his uh, great contribution to Indian freedom struggle was to make the freedom struggle a, a really mass movement. And from this point of view, he judged the revolutionaries, Indian revolutionaries that fought for uh, uh, driving away the British uh, from India. Uh, make it clear that Gandhi believed in a harmonious relation between ends and means. But the revolutionaries in India 
they wanted to achieve their uh, purpose, uh, the means, uh, no matter what the means are. Uh, whatever it may be, Jyotindas uh, had some link with the revolutionaries in the 20s. The jail authorities did not behave well with the prisoners. They did not make any distinction between political prisoners and other prisoners. They were treated alike. Now, this irritated the people like Bhagat Singh and other revolutionaries and they demanded that the political prisoners are a category by themselves and therefore they should be given uh, different treatment. That means they should be at least treated humanly, uh, which it was not. Solemn scenes were witnessed at the horror station on Sunday, 15 September night when the mortal remains of Jyotin Dash were brought down, according to his wishes, to Calcutta for cremation, by the site at the Karatala burning heart, where the mortal remains of his mother and sister had been cremated before. Long before the appointment time, people began to arrive at Howrah, and by 7 p.m., the platform number one and all the roads leading to the station looked like a sea of human hates. Punctually to time, slowly and sadly, the train steamed in amidst defining shouts of Vande Mataram and Jyotin Dash Ki Joy. As the train drew up at the platform, thousands of spectators surged forward and many climbed to the roofs of the station itself in order to see the coffin taken from its compartment. Following in the wake of the coffin, as it was born shoulder high, was Kiran Chandra Dash, the brave brother of the bravest of the brave, Jyotindranath Dash. Among those present were Srimati Bashanti Devi, widow of Desh Chitranjan Dash, Mrs. Kamula Nehru, Dr. Vidhan Chandra Rai, Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee, Moulavi Samsuddin Ahmed and Shuhash Chandra Bosch. The most remarkable fact about the gathering was that everyone was barefooted. Showers of fresh flowers were cast towards the coffin and all along the route, rose water was sprinkled on the bear at the intervals. Throughout the night, men and women failed slowly past the coffin that soon become invisible, buried under flowers. The night wore slowly on, but the crowd was not perceptibly lessened, and great members awaited until the departure for the Kavratala next morning. Mr. Shuhash Chandra Bosch kept a night-long vessel by the side of the coffin with a band of Bengal volunteers. Bear of the Jyotin Dash was carried from the Howrah Town Hall to the procession, three miles long to the Kavratala burning heart. From early hours of the morning, surging waves of people with bare foot and head were making their way towards Howrah, the place of their day's pilgrimage. People of all classes, Hindus, Muslims, Jains, Sheikhs, irrespective of all castes, creed and color, a large number of ladies with weeping eyes made their way to the bear and showered floral wreaths and flowers over the coffin. At the head of the procession walked bare-headed and barefooted leaders. According to archival police report, filming of this procession was illegal and was censored. The main body consisted principally of the students of Calcutta colleges which were closed for the occasion. All shops were closed, traffic was at a standstill, and stationary vehicles were used as observation posts. Men climbing to stand on the roofs of buses, a sea of faces strained to catch a glimpse of the coffin. Outside the Senate House of Calcutta University in College Street, Students, including those from the Bangavashi College, where Jyotin Dash was a student, and a number of girl students waited to pay their tribute. It was nearly two o'clock when the ghat was finally reached. 
the procession having lasted six hours. Throughout the afternoon and during the evening, Kavratala was transferred in a place of pilgrimage for men, women and even children. The body was put on the pair and set fire and by the Jyotin's brother Kiran, there was hardly an eye which did not grow dim when Mr. Bonkim Bihari Dash, Jyotin's father, came to have a last glimpse of his beloved son. Famous Bengali poet Kaji Nuzul Islam described Jyoti as a sacred lotus of India, which was offered to Devi Durga. Mohishashur Mordini Mago, Jago, Eibar Khargodharu, Diyachi Jyoti Ne Anjali Nabo Bharater Aakhi Indibar. And as a result of which the whole nation just uh, was uh, very much agitated and particularly his body when brought back to uh, Calcutta, uh, the people's reaction in Bengal was enormous. Even Rabindranath was uh, very much pained and in different uh, uh, newspaper dailies and journals uh, we find if we just look back into the historical period we would find that there was a tremendous upsurge and tremendous emotions was erased. Now, Subhash Bosch was very much uh, pained and he wrote paragraphs after paragraphs in his Indian struggle. And as we know, there was uh, different political differences between Gandhi and Subhash, but which pained Subhash most uh, was that, that Gandhiji, a man like Gandhiji, that means uh, uh, even at that time, he became the father of the Indian struggle, Indian freedom struggle, but Gandhi did not speak any anything about it. Uh, political incidents are uh, usually were reported in young India, but Gandhi did not write much about it. And while asked why he didn't, he made an adverse adverse comment that irritated many. But in that case, we have to have to do proper justice to Gandhi. Uh, we have to remember that uh, Gandhi's political ambition and objectives, as also his ways and means, were quite different. Whatever it may be, the death of these people, like Jyotindas, Prabhulachaki, Khudiram, these served the great purpose of rousing the Indian people to the consciousness that this British regime must go. Now, we can go into the uh, detailed study that. Uh, Indian freedom movement was not, uh, actually did not happen as a result of the non-violence movement. Uh, there are different currents and cross currents and different ways. Uh, combining all these, we can go into the actual history of Indian freedom movement. Now, Jotin, about Jyotindas, Gandhi did not utter any word of sympathy or anything like that. There was differences between Shuhash and Gandhi. Then a question remains, why then Gandhi did not word, uh, uttered his word of sympathy during the death of uh, Jyotin Das in 1929? Freedom of India from British rule has been achieved by the sacrifices of numerous martyrs. Among such sacrifices, the martyrdom of Jyotin is unique and incomparable. Ireland's Max Sweeney and India's Jyotin Dash are only the two martyrs who laid down their lives by fasting for the freedom movement. It was a message from the family of Terence McSweeney, the Lord Mayor of Cork, who had died a martyr under similar conditions in Ireland. The message was, family of Terence McSweeney have heard with grief and pride of the death of Jyotin Dash. Freedom will come. <laughs> 